649 the breaking updates this morning a major storm category 4 hurricane Idalia set to make landfall on the west side of Florida at any moment now it is barreling down on the Gulf Coast. The storm expected to make landfall again at some point very soon this morning. A state of emergency ahead of time declared and evacuation orders issued for dozens of counties. This storm surged the deadliest part of a hurricane could hit as high as 15 feet in some areas. If you do choose to stay uh, in one of the evacuation zones, first responders will not be able to get you until after the storm has passed. Several airports in Florida have shut down early because of the hurricane. The FAA is warning the impact of the closures will be felt by travelers not just in Florida, but also connections nearby. Again, landfall momentarily. Liam is following the path and the timing. And Liam, people there, they've already been getting hit for hours on the worst side of the hurricane. Yeah, that northeast quadrant always usually is the toughest one to get through. And this is exactly what we're seeing right now, especially places like Cedar Key down through parts of Cross City. We just had the eye reemerge out of the system. It was going through what we call an eye wall replacement cycle into early this morning and now we're just getting a really good idea about where the core of this system is as you head into the morning hours. For it to be an official landfall, by the way, folks, you need to have 50% of the eye crossing over the land border here and it's looking like it's going to make landfall right in this area here as you work our way through. Of course, at 130 miles an hour, likely we're going to see maybe 130, 135 be the official number once this is all said and done. And don't forget to, you got to keep in mind, this is making its way up through Georgia and right up the coastline here. A lot of rough surf and a lot more flooding potential into South Carolina and North Carolina as well as this continues to make its way northward as well. Thank you, Liam. Updates coming up CBS Mornings at 7 with their team. Sunrise traffic at 651 looking live there. Nice and calm on the west side when it comes to the weather here locally. On the roads, crash reported Highway 33A, Chile Avenue between Lettington Avenue and Jasmine Road. We'll check the roads again at 725. More breaking news. One victim is in the hospital after an overnight shooting on the west side. The sheriff's office says this happened just before midnight on 390 in Gates near the Chile exit. It was actually a good Samaritan who picked up the victim from a gas station parking lot and got the person to the hospital. That victim is in stable condition. If you have any leads that can help, please call 911. The latest on four gunshot victims in Rochester, one with life threatening injuries after a quadruple shooting overnight. Police tell us they responded to these calls starting around 815 at Savannah Street. On scene, they found two women wounded, a 63 year old and a 29 year old. A third victim, a man, was found around the corner at Beast Main and Sio Streets. He was also involved in a crash. All three of those victims are expected to live. The fourth person shot was dropped off at the hospital. That's a man in his 20s with critical injuries. No arrests have been made. We'll keep you updated on that quadruple shooting here in the city from last night at rochesterfirst.com. Starting today, anyone over the age of 21 can buy marijuana legally for the first time in Rochester. That's at Herbal IQ's Growers Showcase opening up on East Ave. Yesterday, the Honest Farm Showcase took place in Newark, marking the first legal marijuana sales for the Finger Lakes. These events host dispensaries that are already legal. They've got everything done with the state, bringing in growers to sell products directly to customers. Another opened up in Batavia. This is an exciting moment, we're told, for farmers who say they're eager to sell off excess product. This time next week, all the school buses will be back out all over our roads with districts opening up for the fall. Hayden Wentworth joins us live this morning from Brighton with a warning for drivers to slow down. Hayden. Brennan, you may have already seen them. Buses are out practicing their routes for school, the start of school next week. And law enforcement is reminding everybody about the safety that comes when you are sharing the road. A statewide survey from the New York Association for Pupil Transportation found some 50,000 drivers illegally pass stop school buses every single day in New York during the school year. Deputy Brendan Hurley at MCSO says drivers simply need to stop and stay behind buses when those flashing lights come on, something that would also be helpful for your morning commute. Hurley says to plan ahead. Try to leave for work before or after your neighborhood bus route so you can avoid any delays. The school bus driver checks traffic, will wave the kids in front of the bus. The kids pay attention. They know what to do. Um, this is where it's on 
the rest of us as a community to remember it's that time of year again. School's going back in session. You're going to see buses. They're going to be stopping. Maybe you need to leave for work a little bit earlier because there's going to be a bus stop on your route. Bottom line is slow down and don't break the law. The consequences could be deadly. The state DMV says our youngest students grades K through three are most at risk. Those children, though they represent the less than a third of the student population, they are involved in most cases where a student is seriously hurt or even killed. In Brighton, Hayden Wentworth, News 8. Brennan. Right. Hayden, thank you. Good advice there. Soon enough, we'll have a bus stop forecast. Not yet, yeah. though. Not well, a week to go. Just about a week to go yeah. there as you start to work our way close. Hard to believe at this point. I we know. are watching some cooler weather begin to work its way in just in time for these last couple of days of summer. Right behind this, that high pressure going to drag down temperatures. We're talking upper 60s, not just today, but also into tomorrow. Also, the potential of a few lake effect rain showers beginning to work their way in, mixed in with some of the clouds that we'll see throughout the daytime today. Your eight day forecast is telling though. We look at Thursday, 71 degrees. We'll see temperatures back down into the low 50s for lows each night. And then, wow, it is just a complete <laughs> flip of the script. We talk about temperatures into the mid and upper 80s, maybe even making a run of 90 into next week. Labor Day weekend's looking great. No rain in the forecast. I know. I mean, what? There's not much more you could ask for if you've been missing summer. Summer finally showing up with a few weeks to go. All right. Thank you, Liam. That's it for Sunrise CBS Mornings coming your way next. We'll see you back here with local updates in half an hour. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.